Hello there, my name's Ewan and I am a self-confessed astronomy addict. Uh, today I'm going to be sitting in my Skyshed pod in the rain during the day uh, doing a video review of the 365 Astronomy uh, 60mm Finder and Guider. So I hope you enjoy it. Okay, so let's take a look at the scope as you get it when it comes out of the box. First of all, we'll look at the miniature dovetail here. You can see that that actually is a standard Skywatcher and Celestron finder foot sized dovetail. So it will just slide in straight in place of your finder. Or you can undo the screws, remove the rings, and pop it on a standard dovetail if that's what you prefer, which actually is how I use this scope. The only two parts of the scope that aren't this lovely metal are the 60mm very clean, very clear optics. And if you can see them, the little nylon tips to the screws that hold the scope in position. Around the back of the scope, we've got a very nice sliding three and a half centimeter focuser and then you get an extra centimeter or so with this uh, non-rotating helical focuser which you can actually lock off in place as well obviously the sliding focuser locks off quite happily as well and right at the very back hopefully you can see that it's a lovely little brass compression ring so you're not going to damage your eyepieces when you put them in there Moving on to eyepieces, uh, this is my very boring and normal 17mm plusle, which I'm just using to show you it's a standard one and a quarter inch fit for the eyepieces. But you do also have the standard T2 thread here for attaching cameras, guide cameras and the like. And that's mainly how I use this scope. However, when I was first trying it out, I did decide to see whether it would take a right angle or not. Now, this is my standard Mead uh, prism style right angle. There are two ways to make this scope work as a right angled finder or just a standard right angle scope. The first one is to take your right angle and your two times Barlow. Marry the two in together. And there you go. You have a right angle that will find focus quite happily. Now that's because the play on this will allow you to get in close enough with the right angle provided you've got the Barlow in place. Without the Barlow, the scope just doesn't quite move in close enough to get focus. There is an option however, what you can do if you are using this as a dedicated uh, right angle for your guide scope, you can take off just five mils of this barrel here. Normally these barrels unscrew, you can find someone with a, a, a lathe who will take that down for you, ask at your local astro club, they'll be someone there who's able to do that for you. That's how I had my previous uh, right angle uh, adjusted and uh, then you'll be able to use it as a standard right angle. Now when I was using this scope on my initial test uh, I was using a reduced right angle. hadn't realized that at the time and I just put a, a, my zoom eyepiece into the telescope and slewed round to Jupiter and I nearly forgot that I was supposed to be testing the scope as a guide scope and a finder because I was just staring quite happily at Jupiter for a good 20-25 minutes. It was fantastic. The views you get through this scope are brilliant. The optics are coated so that cuts down on the glare and such. It's got the built-in uh, 
dew shield as well so and I've, I've never actually had a problem with dew with this scope I haven't used it in the dead of winter yet but I will and if there's any problems I'll come back and report them I'm sure there won't be it's been fantastic so far the main thing that I like about this scope is that it is so versatile it is a big solid piece of metal that can be used as a grab and go a finder a guider however you want to use it this scope just seems to fit the bill it's it's great and it's solid it really is a brilliant piece of kit now what I want to do next is show you how I actually use the finder when it's attached to the back of my scope so we're just gonna switch off the camera and attach everything back on there bear with me a moment okay welcome back um, as you can see I've moved the scope from its small dovetail onto a standard Vixen dovetail so that it just nicely sits on the back of my uh, main scope the uh, small dovetail I've put into the finder bracket just so that you can see it does fit nice and snugly there's no problems at all there and because it's actually longer than is necessary for the uh, the actual foot it means that you can adjust the balance of the scope quite easily so if your scope does end up your main scope ends up being a bit front heavy because you've got that on there or a bit back heavy because of the location of your uh, your finder foot then you can adjust it it's nice and straightforward here we have the scope mounted with my QHY5 camera um, why am I using a QHY5 camera because I don't have a ZWO one and incidentally the ZWO has the same thread as the QHY so will as you see fit onto the back of the scope without you needing to put an adapter in it does mean that everything is then completely rigid so that you can uh, use it to uh, guide your uh, your main scope without problems and I really do mean without problems let's just head over to the PC because I want to show you a couple of images that I took okay now apologies for the uh, quality of the screen here but um, we are watching a video on a laptop so um, uh, deal with it basically what we've got here is as you can see it says up here we're looking at uh, uh, it was supposed to be elm attack yeah that's elm attack there that you can see through i was using uh, phd2 and uh, this was the guide camera attached to the telescope and as you can see it's a nice big bright star which is exactly what i wanted to do a quick test we're just going to move on now and you can see that what's happening is the uh, scope is trying to do a bit of a guide on its guide star near the Whirlpool Galaxy which it subsequently did I walked away came back about uh, 10 minutes later and there it was still sitting there nice and happily on the star no problems at all uh, and in fact to set that particular test up I had my scope really badly set up I'd uh, done a there or thereabouts northern alignment on the mount and then just leveled it by eye and plonked everything on it and thought there we go that'll give the, uh, the the guide camera and the guide scope a good run for their money and it performed absolutely brilliantly it was a bright clear crisp image it held the star without any problems there was no build up of dew on the lens uh, on the uh, yeah the lens sorry and uh, it worked fantastically I took some eight minute exposures of the Leo triplet and this is the resulting image that came out you can see that the uh, everything is nice and clear on the three uh, galaxies the stars are nice and round uh, over here we've got a bit of an issue but that's due to the fact that I need a coma corrector for my telescope which I know about and I've got one coming hopefully 
and uh, as you can see it's, it turned out really well considering that uh, this was just through a DSLR on a very badly aligned mount. So there we have it, uh, I've told you pretty much everything about the scope, uh, I've now had it for probably about three months and I've been using it every single time I come out here to uh, to have a play and feed my habit. Uh, it has never failed to find a guide star. It has never failed to guide, even in the windiest of conditions. It's been able to uh, to compensate using uh, PHD2, and that's despite the fact that I'm using a fairly old camera uh, as a guide cam. So you don't necessarily have to have the biggest and best kit uh, in order to be able to follow your hobby. This 60mm guider is smaller than the uh, Skywatcher ST80 that I was using previously, but it's better. The ST80 I found didn't give us clear an image. The fact that the ST80 has a old rack and pinion style focuser meant that it was often hard to, to find focus and to maintain focus. This little scope does the job perfectly and the helical focuser means that you can make the tiniest of adjustments to it and uh, without uh, without destroying your, your images. It's fantastic. I, I would thoroughly, thoroughly recommend uh, this as a guide scope to anyone looking for a new one. I think that if you're in the market for a little grab and go that you can just plonk on a tripod and show off the stars to people. If you're looking for a small scope that you can put a bit of uh, the solar film over and get some, uh, some, some shots of the sun, this really is worth considering it's it's been brilliant i i can't say any more about it it's it's far better than i expected and it is exactly what i want it to be so thanks very much i'll be back again i've got to do a review of my new little st 102 mil scope same rack and pinion focuser i know uh, that's something that I will be upgrading um, and I also want to show you how I've actually repurposed the uh, little bracket that the uh, this uh, scope came on uh, in order to be able to attach a camera to uh, my grab-and-go mount. So thanks very much, I'll see you next time.